Hey everybody, it's Ripley back again. <clears throat> We're going to talk about triple integrals and cylindrical coordinates today. These are so cool. Don't be intimidated by the name though. Cylindrical is really just an, ex excuse me, cylindrical coordinates are just an extension of polar coordinates. And we've already played with double integrals and polar coordinates. We know how polar coordinates work. Let's make sure we remember. We got a polar coordinates. We got tan of theta equals y over x. I know that x, oops, I know that x is equal to r cos theta. I know that y is equal to r sine theta. Sine theta, I don't know what's going on with my pen here, but it is what it is. And then I've got x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Now, with cylindrical coordinates, if now it's not difficult to think about how this works. Remember how these guys, these four gentle equations that drove us so crazy in pre-calculus, and then we got to hopefully got our, get our brains wrapped a little bit more around them back in double integrals. The, these predominantly play ball, well, they exclusively play ball in the xy plane. So what I'm doing in cylindrical coordinates is I'm taking a slice of this little chunk that was created by polar coordinates and I'm raising it up a couple of z's, right? So what ends up happening is you end up carving out this piece of a cylinder. Now you may ask, how do you deal with that z? Super simple. All you do is you say, whoops, is you say z equals z. I got a tiny lag. Hopefully that goes away. I may have to shrink this thing down. All right. So z equals z. So, remember back in double integrals, we had the double integral over d, or, uh, yeah, over d, and then we took uh, f of r cos theta, and this was just, dang it, and this is r sine theta, and then we took r dr d theta, remember that? And that gave us, oh, I don't know what's going on right there, and that gave us our fun little bit of, uh, uh, sorry, real quick, get this thing taken care of. Um, that gave us a way to find volume, right? In triple integrals, all that we're going to do is we're going to now check it. This is such a perfect picture. I love it. All right. All we're going to do is we've got our enclosure, right, which represents this slice of a cylinder. Now, this cylinder is basically, it's two cylinders, isn't it? This is the region bounded between two cylinders. All right, it's bounded between theta equals a and theta equals b, r between h1 and h2, and z between u1 and u2. So think of it as, what would this be? It, you know what it would be? It would be like if we took um, an aluminum can, a tuna fish can, and we cut this little segment out, and this little thickness right here, that, whoops, let's see if it's going to let me write on it, right? This would be my change in R, right? This would, how it's written here, this would be H2 minus H1. This distance, come on, this distance would be uh, U2 minus U1. Oh, my pen's making me crazy. And then this distance around would be from theta equals A to theta equals B. So how do we rewrite this in a triple integral? Well, it's pretty, pretty simple. All right, everybody, I got to apologize. I'm having huge technical issues on my machine with uh, uh, both Camtasia and the Bamboo, the little dock, the tablet that I use. So I've rewritten everything that we've talked about, and I'm, I'm working on Jimmy's machine right now. So just so you know. All right, so rewrote everything. Remember, tan theta equals y over x, x was our cos, y equals our sine, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and z equals z. That Remember, that z equals z thing is going to freak people out, but don't freak out. That's the, this is the coolest part because it's so easy. Um, remember, the z equals z adds the thickness of this little cylindrical slice. Now, I, I'm simply going to write this equation and then I'm going to do a problem with you. I think that you'll enjoy it. We'll, we'll do this one kind of together too just because it looks kind of fun to do uh, to try and build this thing out as though we were integrating it. But then we'll do another one. All right, the triple integral. Oh, by the way, I rewrote this. I think on the other one I put a D there. In the textbook it says R, so I rewrote it just to be consistent with what I've done before. All right, anyway, so a triple integral with these guys is a triple integral, all right, over the enclosed area of, or the enclosed volume, excuse me, of F of, now remember, it's just F of X, Y, Z, right? So according to this, it's going to be R cos theta, R sine theta, and then z. And then I end up with an r dz dr d theta. 
just like before. Now you may say, well, well Ripley, why is this r then dz then uh, dz dr d theta? Well, remember, we can move these things around, but this is the most convenient way to do it. And usually with these z's, that's when we're looking at, at like we can end up with some weird functions here, all right, that we got to be a little bit careful of. Again, setting these up is the most fun, and I don't want to do a whole lot of that in this video. It's far more instructive to just do a bunch of them together because they're, they're super cool. Um, however, I am going to do a couple with you. Let's set this guy up. Let's see. We have really no information, but I think we can sort of eyeball it and kind of try and set up this guy right here. I want to figure out the volume of E. Now remember, if I want the volume of something, if I want the volume with a triple integral, then what happens to the function? Well, it just turns into a 1. So you end up with this guy, and then you end up with a 1. Now that R is always along for the ride, and then I go dV, because that dV is created by the dz, dr, and d theta. All right, so what would this look like? Well, I don't know. What do you think? We work from the outside in, so we'll deal with d theta first. Well, they kind of screwed us on this because it looks like it could have been from zero to pi halves, but let's call it, let's call it just for giggles, let's call it something small, right? So pi 20ths, pi 20ths to, what do you think? Pi 19, well, let's call it 9 pi 20ths, right? Which is just a little under pi halves. 9 pi 20 s. That would be where theta is fanning out. And then I have the integral. Let's see, r. What do you think r is? Well, I don't know. If that's a 1, that looks like a 2, and that looks like a 3. So r would go from 2 to 3. It's easy enough, isn't it? Then I got this integral right here. Now, z. What do you think z goes? Again, if my scale is right, that kind of looks like we'll call that 2, and if that's 2, that looks like 5. So I would integrate from 2 to 5 of r dz dr d theta, and I would be done. <laughs> it's that simple. It's not hard at all. All right? Now, what if we wanted to figure out the volume? Uh, this, this, this is actually kind of interesting. Let's figure out the volume of a cylinder um, of radius 1. So volume of a cylinder of radius 1 that is 5 units high. So w 1 unit in, in uh, of radius, and then of radius, <laughs> with a radius of 1 and a height, uh, whoops, so, ugh, yuck, let's just call it a cylinder. Man, I'm having a hard time. You know, technical issues just are awful. Uh, that's not the way you spell, s <laughs> what? Yeah, I guess it is. Why does that not look right? Uh, volume of cylinder R equals 1 H equals 5. Now, we know what this thing looks like, right? It's, it's this guy, and it's this guy, and we already know what its volume is. I know that volume equals pi r squared h. So this is going to be pi times 1 squared times 5. So the answer had better be 5 pi or something has gone horribly wrong. Now, let's visualize this in cylindrical coordinates, okay? So here's the deal. Now, you know I'm going to screw this up when I try and draw, but I think it'll be decent. All right, now I've got a circle. All right, let's see. Let's figure this out. I know, ugh, bear, just bear with me, please. I beg of you. You know I'm going to screw this up, but that's all right. There we go. How's that sound? All right. <laughs> all right, so where's my radius going from and to? Well, let's see, R is going to be between, well, it's, a, it's got a radius of 1. So it's going to go from 0 to 1, right? Now, where's theta going to be? Well, theta is going to be between what and what? Well, I'm going to start at 0, and I'm going to wrap all the way through 360 degrees. So this is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And then what is z? Where does z live? Well, z lives between 0 and 5, right? So let's do this thing out and make sure that it's 5 pi. So I know the volume is going to equal integral, integral, integral. And then remember, I've got an r, d, well, I don't know why I put it all the way over there. Let me move that over a little tighter because I know I'm not, when I'm trying to find a volume of an enclosure, then I put a 1 for my function, right? So this is going to be r and then dz, dr and then d theta. And now all I got to do is make sure that I put these in the right spot. So theta is between 0 and 2 pi, 2 pi. I know that r is between 0 and 1. And then I know that, uh, where's z, what I say, 0 to 5, right? 
All right, here we go. So antiderivative, I work inside out. So this is going to be R Z integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1 of R Z. This thing is from 0 to 5, and then dr d theta, which is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 1 of 5r, right? dr d theta, d theta. And then keep on working, integral from 0 to 2 pi. Of. Now, remember, we're integrating with respect to r because we're working inside out. So I get 5 r squared halves, right, from 0 to 1, d theta. And you can already see it's going to work out swimmingly, isn't it? So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 5 halves d theta. Antiderivative of that is 5 halves theta from 0 to 2 pi twos cancel, and voila, I end up with 5 theta. Now, they're going to get a lot more complicated. Let's be very clear on that. I, this is It's not a trite example, but it, it's its an example that shows that we better get the same. What's 5 theta? Yell at me about that, would you guys? It's 5 pi, you dingbat. There we go. Um, 5 pi, sorry. It's an example to show you that, I mean, my methodology better be consistent with what I know geometrically versus what I know using this new fancy schmancy calculus. All right. <clears throat> Again, the fun of these is setting them up. Let's be very, very clear. And it's, it's, I think you're really going to enjoy this section and the next section when we get into spherical coordinates, if you can avoid sort of panicking. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to show you the theory behind it. I wanted to make sure that you're not afraid when you see something like this, right? And then one last thing in closing. Remember, this function means that we take these values that live in three space and we're sending them off into some hyper it, this, what we have is a hyper cylinder, right? We're, we're chucking this thing into a fourth dimension. But when I remove this guy, I get to use it to figure out volumes of solids, which is super fun. All right, um, I'll leave you guys to it. Um, we will be uh, we'll be working on a bunch of these. Spend a couple of days doing it because it's, it's so much fun. So I will see you in class tomorrow and have a really good day. Thanks for your time and attention. Bye. -bye.